In summer 2021, it was reported that Fred Durst dropped $3 million for a revamped 1920s villa overlooking the famous Chateau Marmont in Los Angeles. But this is far from his first rodeo. The Limp Bizkit frontman is known for jumping homes and over the last couple of decades, he's bought and sold over 10 properties around LA. This includes a Hollywood Hills villa he flipped in 2015 and another Spanish style abode in the Outpost Estates neighborhood. Today, we'll take a look at a few of his homes. We even found the listings. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Fred Durst is a rapper, singer, songwriter and more who, let's be real, is best known for being the frontman and lyricist of the band Limp Bizkit. I don't know about you guys, but I've always been a huge fan. If you're wondering what Fred's been up to as of late, he's been on a summer tour and working on a long teased album with Limp Bizkit as well as dabbling in acting and part time directing. He's also used some of his estimated $20 million net worth towards his hobby of buying and selling LA area real estate. His most recent home being a $3 million sunset strip villa full of chic living spaces. Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment, this one checking out the estates of Fred Durst. Be sure to subscribe and ring that bell for notifications because we post brand new videos daily. As always, you can follow me over on Instagram to chat, and now let's get into this video. Just a few months ago in July 2021, it was reported that Fred was officially rocking it out in his new digs, a charming and fully renovated 1920s villa in West Hollywood, Los Angeles. This high profile location is even more desirable considering his new property overlooks the Sunset Strip's famous Chateau Marmont. Fred paid $3 million for his new Mediterranean inspired residence and the former owners refreshed the home with a trendy new look before flipping it to him. Now the house which was originally built in 1925 showcases chic living spaces that mix both vintage and modern elements. You know, two-tone walls, green velvet drapes, and original light fixtures, just to name a few details. While Fred's new estate sits on a petite lot, the interiors span 2,440 square feet of space with three bedrooms and four bathrooms throughout. Honestly, once we take a look at a couple of the rockers' former homes, you may notice a similar aesthetic, and we can almost say that he has a bit of a type. Living spaces in the new crib offer wood beam ceilings, plenty of rich hardwood floors and modern updates throughout. Out front, the house sits right on the street with a set of steps leading to the wooden door, but thick greenery provides some privacy here. Fred's new house doesn't have a foyer, rather it opens right up into a cozy living room with fireplace, sunny windows and front doors out to a rustic fountain and courtyard. This living room is beside a den with flat screen TV which could be used as a bedroom and this space has a stamped tin ceiling, a bathroom and some more front doors. Past those doors you'll find another side of the serene outdoor space and the garden wraps around to the fountain. Fred's new gourmet kitchen has been fully remodeled and blends fresh white cabinetry with the wood ceiling and floor accents that run through the rest of the home. This space also includes a butcher block center island and stainless appliances. Attached to this room, there's a classy dining parlor with a wet bar, which opens through French doors to a shaded private patio with outdoor fireplace and comfy seating. The property may not be huge, but I'm loving all of the cozy patios. Moving upstairs, Fred's master suite is worthy of a rock star and boasts a walk-in closet and separate sitting room that walks out to a private terrace. In fact, this balcony spans the whole length of the home and looks out to undisturbed views of the Chateau Marmont. His attached bath is contemporary while preserving some of the original charm of the villa, fitted with the same hardwood flooring, dual vanities, glass shower and separate tub. Also on this floor of the home, there's another bedroom suite with bath. To complete the property, the quaint backyard is landscaped with perfect gardens. And aside from those courtyards and patios we saw, there was even space to squeeze in a separate one bed, one bath guest house with a kitchenette and small living room. I mean, the crib may not have a swimming pool, but it's definitely full of character and charm. While Fred has been buying and selling a handful of Los Angeles area homes over the years, back in 2015, he listed this house, another 1920s Spanish style villa on the market for just over $1.6 million. He had lived in the home not even a full year before selling it, having snagged it off of actress Minnie Driver for $1.5 million. 
This house had plenty of similarities to Fred's current digs, but it was slightly larger, spanning 3,055 square feet of space with three bedrooms and three bathrooms. Nestled in the Hollywood Hills, at the time of sale, listing materials showed the home was still quite private and had a street level gate along with security cameras. The gate opened up to a covered outdoor staircase that further led to a tree shaded and tiled courtyard that boasted a colorful and vintage fireplace. In more recent photos of the home, we can see it's been updated and gotten a modern refresh, but it was built in 1926 and retains some of those original details as well. Fred's former house also featured wood beam ceilings throughout and dark hardwood flooring, but there's also tile in some of the rooms. The entry hall moves into a step down living room, boasting a wood burning fireplace and front doors that open to a sunny porch with canyon views. At the time Fred was offloading the digs, the kitchen was nearly all white with a center island and appeared to be well kept. However, the checkerboard floors and white ceramic countertops, well, those were a little bit retro. These days, the kitchen looks like a completely new room and it seems to be open to some of the other living areas, also boasting fresh stainless steel appliances, new floors and more. At the time, an upper floor in the house was used by Durst as a recording studio slash jam room, but of course, now it's likely used as private sleeping quarters. The lower floor of this home housed two ensuite guest rooms, as well as a master suite that once upon a time boasted a colorful tiled bathroom and dressing room with windows. Outside, the property boasted lush gardens and a small flat yard with multi-level patios scattered about. Finally, another home that was reported Fred sold back in 2007 was this home in Outpost Estates. And would you look at that? It's yet another classic Spanish style villa. According to public records, he offloaded the house for about $1.4 million and it was located in Hollywood, Los Angeles, more specifically in Outpost Estates, which is an exclusive and private neighborhood. And this was actually one of the first residences ever built in the community. Fred's former home was constructed in 1933 by Charles Toberman, who also built the Egyptian theater and some other Hollywood landmarks. This house spanned 1,807 square feet of space and boasted three beds and three baths throughout. There was an overall charming aesthetic to the modest home and it was remodeled but retained that original magical charm. There were picturesque arches throughout as well as vaulted ceilings and hardwood floors. Common rooms included a cozy living room with fireplace and French doors out to the garden, as well as a chef's kitchen fitted with top of the line appliances, Caesar stone counters and custom cabinets. The entire floor plan was ideal and the indoor and outdoor spaces flowed seamlessly with one another. The master suite, which Fred occupied at one time, had a luxury ensuite bath as well as cedar lined closets and a balcony. The lush yard, which sat on almost half an acre lot, was full of different fruit trees and had different courtyards and terraces with a European vibe. Off of the main living room, there was a grand terrace for entertaining guests outdoors and elsewhere you'd find a meditation area overlooking the city. Now of course, that's not a definitive list of all of Fred Durst's former residences, in fact it's not even close. But that does wrap up this house tour and we got to see at least three of his homes. This included his latest purchase and two of his former houses in LA. I can see that Fred definitely likes that classic Spanish style look when it comes to his estates and there are similarities with all of those we looked at, but I can't really blame him, like they're nice places. Which of the three was your fave? I'm pretty sure the current one is my favorite, but I like them all. Be sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks for watching, don't forget to follow me on Instagram to chat and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!